If your friend has depression, you can help them in ways that a professional really just can't. I'm a psychologist, I've worked with a lot of people with depression, and the impact that well-informed friends can make? Just enormous. And in this video we're going to start with the biggest obstacle that you might face. This is when you try to help someone who has depression, oftentimes they will actually resist or push you away. But there are strategies to overcome this. And something else that is really important is being able to spot the signs of depression earlier on. Because the earlier you can spot the signs and address it, the less chance depression has to get really entrenched. Therefore we'll cover six signs of depression that can be easily spotted. And the final part of this video is a list of actionable steps that you can take with your friend to help alleviate their depression. Okay, so you want to help out your friend, and the place you start by doing this is by going to them and trying to have a conversation. But they just talk endlessly in circles about all the negative and horrible things that their life is filled with. They're stuck in the past, and they feel completely hopeless and helpless. So when they're in the middle of ranting at you, you might try to just cut them off. Or you might try to come at them with advice or critique or criticism, but when you try that, then they either just shut down or they shut you off completely. And why is this? Well, because people with depression are often completely exhausted from feeling like they're constantly being put down and criticized. And they can perceive even well-meaning support or advice or conversation as yet another put down. But here's the good news. There is a conversation skill that you can use to really minimize this problem. But in order for this to work, I need to lay out a few basic things that everyone needs to keep in mind. Avoid saying things like, cheer up, or it's not so bad. If you want someone to hear you out, you need to start by lowering their defensiveness. Start by acknowledging their felt experience. Like, yeah, life does feel really crap for you right now. I believe you. Then encourage them to talk about the future instead of being stuck in the past. Because future thinking prepares the mind for action, and action is essential to overcoming depression. Then next up, this is the part that I really want you to lock in. It's the communication strategy of priming. Priming is all about setting the stage for a person to have new ideas or more positive ways of reacting to a situation. And you aim to do this by gently nudging them in this direction without them even realizing what's going on. It's subtle but extremely effective when you're talking to people who might be very defensive or who might be quite prone to like shutting down or shutting off a conversation. So here's how you do it. Instead of cutting them off in the middle of their rant and diving directly into giving advice, after you've acknowledged their feelings, you prime them with a statement that brings their awareness to the ways in which they might reject or shut down the conversation. For example, if there's someone you're talking to who's very sensitive to criticism and shuts down the conversation whenever they perceive they're being criticized, you want to start by saying something that acknowledges their emotional state and their felt experience to lower their defensiveness. Then don't give them advice but let them know that you have an idea that might help. Then bring their awareness to their typical unhelpful pattern of shutting down whenever they receive advice. And then ask them if they would be willing to hear you out. So I'll give you an example, but this example is going to sound extremely robotic. You need to take these words, change them into your own words to fit your own situation to make them sound genuine. But here's the example. It's obvious that things have been really rough for you, man, and I get how it's super easy to feel stuck. I have a suggestion that might be a bit different to what you're normally expecting, but I know you also kind of have a tendency of shutting down a little bit whenever you feel like people are just giving you too much advice. But I think this idea could help shift things around a little bit if you're open to hearing it. This statement achieves all of the goals. It lets them know that you're aware of how they feel, and you're not just going to bombard them with unwanted advice. It puts them in the driver's seat and it also brings their awareness to their own unhelpful tendency of shutting down whenever someone is trying to offer help. And by bringing awareness to an unhelpful tendency, it makes this unhelpful tendency less likely to occur. So by using priming statements, you bring your friend's awareness to unhelpful tendencies in a non-judgmental way. But all of this is useless if you can't actually spot the signs of depression. Now I'm not going to give you a massive useless list of symptoms that is so long that nobody can remember it. Instead, here are six signs and symptoms of depression that I think from the perspective of a friend or family member are relatively easy to spot and they all give a really good reason to be concerned. Hyper-independence. This is where a person starts just pushing everybody away, refusing all types of help as if they don't want to be a burden upon anybody. A sudden withdrawal from hobbies, 
a sudden decrease in the amount of communication, a sudden increase in irritability, a sudden increase in disorganization, and a sudden increase in really unusual mood swings. Now, realistically, a lot of these sudden changes are not actually sudden increases or sudden decreases. They happen gradually over time. But because we don't typically see our friends every single day, we might only see them every few weeks or so, when we see them, it looks like a really big overnight behavioral shift. But this is actually a good thing because in our eyes, if it's a big sudden change, it's more noticeable. So we're actually going to be aware of it. So then we can actually identify that something's going wrong and start trying to help. Now we've covered communication strategies and spotting the signs of depression. Next, we're gonna talk about action and getting the person active. But just like there's ways for communication to go wrong, there's ways that getting a person active can go wrong as well. But there are a few simple tips that can address this problem. Let's start with a rapid fire list of actions that you can either encourage your friend to do or do together with your friend. Some of these ideas are very generic and some of them are a little bit more specific. Just listen out and whenever you hear an idea that sounds like it would fit your friend or their situation, just make a note of it. So here Here's the list. Getting them outside the house into sunlight, going for a walk, do some volunteering together, start a project together, work together towards cleaning their room or their house, create a ritual like a movie night, learn a skill or a hobby together, become their accountability person who keeps them on track, encourage them to get professional support, help them to plan small, useful steps to make life changes, invite them multiple times to socialize, or bring the socialization to them. Whatever the action is, no matter how small, Action builds momentum and this leads to bigger actions which leads to a sense of satisfaction with life because it feels like life is finally moving in the right direction. And it's this momentum and movement over time that accumulates and drags a person out of the deepest parts of their depression and keeps them away from it. And as a psychologist myself, I can't do things that you can do. I can't show up to a person's house and fling open their curtains and take them out for a walk, but you can. However, there is one main way that getting involved in a person's life like this can go wrong. You see, one of the hallmarks of depression is a feeling of helplessness. And when a friend comes in and they're all pushy and motivating, it can certainly get the person active. But if they feel they're only being active because someone else is forcing them to be active, it can kind of reinforce this feeling of being helpless, that you need another person to make you active. So there's a fine line to tread. You want to get your friend active, but you don't want them to feel that they rely on you, that they can't do these things themselves. The best way to do this is to highlight your friend's autonomy. Do this by highlighting their role and the part that they played in whatever actions are taken. And talk to them and highlight to them how whatever activities you did together, whatever actions were taken, wouldn't have been done, wouldn't have been completed without them. For example, if you are helping them to create plans to be more active, to clean their house, to do more exercise, whatever it is, you can be their accountability partner so that they're the ones doing the actions, but you're just helping them to stay accountable and keep on track. Or if you guys are gonna work on a task together, which can be a fantastic idea, you can both start it together, but just make them the one that has to finish it. Or if you guys work on a task together to completion, Afterwards, talk about what each person did, how each person contributed. Really highlight the fact to your friend that they weren't just an observer watching all these things get done for them. No, like they played a role in this. And I really can't stress this enough. This is a really important point. You are their friend. You are not their doctor. You are not their psychologist. Do not overburden yourself because if you burn yourself out, then forget helping them. Now you're also going to need help. If you spot a lot of the signs of depression, one of the best things you can do as a friend is encourage your friend to get professional help. This works. I have had many people come to me and they tell me expressly the reason that they ended up booking in sessions was because of encouragement slash pushiness from their friends to go and get professional help. And often people who have depression have other issues as well. Things like anxiety, social anxiety, ADHD, things like emotional volatility. If these problems also relate to a friend that you know, or maybe to yourself, I have videos on all of these topics on my profile.